All right. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Welcome, everybody. This is my first time on the uh, uh, the Guiding Light um, Prayer Line Live. And I'm also uh, recording on the uh, Facebook Live on the um, under my page uh, of Facebook. So I'm trying to do double duty and then triple duty with also uh, working the conference call. Hallelujah. We praise God for this opportunity to uh, speak this morning. And, and um I need to sit, just check on the conference call for just a minute. Conference call, mom, say something. Make sure you can hear me. Can you hear me, mom, on the conference call? Pastor mom? Okay. I don't know if I'm coming through on that. Let me see. Uh, testing one, two, three on the conference call. Let's see. Hmm. I don't think I'm going on the conference call, but I'm going to just trust that uh, it is going through. Um, see, somebody just got off. Hold on just a minute on Facebook. I'm sorry for the just trying to uh, get my technical difficulties going. Let's try this. Okay, Mom, can you hear me on the conference call? All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, I muted myself. That's why I needed to ch check that. Okay, all right, we good to go on the conference call? Hallelujah. Amen. So, praise God, everybody. All right, all right. Our lesson today comes from, from, um, the book of Exodus, so grab your Bibles and we're going to turn to Exodus 31. Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. You've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We claim this day is the, this is the Lord's day. A day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Praise you, God. We praise you and worship you and glorify and magnify your name. We say the highest praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see this day, allowing us to be a part of this day, allowing us to be a part of your will. We ask you now, the Heavenly Father, that as we get ready to study your word in Sunday school over this technology, we plead the blood of Jesus over this technology called the Internet, Facebook, conference calls, all of it, God. We just ask you to have your way. Clear the airway that your word might go out with power, that your word might go out with an anointing, that your word might go out and not return to you void. We thank you for this right now in the name of Jesus. Touch every household, dear Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus that is listening to this word right now over the internet and going to listen to these recordings later. We plead the blood of Jesus over their household, over their lives, over their families, Lord, over their communities, over their neighborhoods, over their cities, their towns, their countries, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over their family members, over their finances, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord, over everything in their lives, knowing that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think, God. We give you glory now. We give you praise now, God, because we know it's already done in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that after we study this word today, that we will not be just hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Have your way to Heavenly Father. We thank you right now in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our lesson, as I said today, comes from Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 31, Exodus chapter 31. And um, 
We're going to start at verse 12, Exodus chapter 31, starting at verse 12. And I'll be reading uh, out of a New Living Translation. Uh, not New Living Translation. This is New King James. I'll read out a New Living Translation later. The King James, the New King James Version of the Bible. New King James Version of the Bible. And it reads, starting at verse 12 of chapter 31 of Exodus. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath. You shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death, for whoever does any work on it that person shall be cut off from among his people. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh is the, the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. And when he had made an end of, the, of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony tablets of stone written with the finger of God. Amen. 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 Our lesson today, as I said, is, is, is coming from this Exodus passage and it is dealing with the Sabbath. It is dealing with the Sabbath observance. And so as we look at this, this text today, we're going to look at it from, from, from the time in which the historical time in which God uh, uh, put this, put the Sabbath in place, and then we're going to also correlate it to the time uh, of of um, today and how we, as as Christians, are to deal with uh, the Sabbath. So our key verse, our key verse is is verse thirteen. Verse thirteen is our key verse, and it reads like this. It says. Uh, speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord who sanctifies you. That that's our, our key verse. It's 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 to be perpetual. It is a sign. And doing this 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 quarter of the Sunday school lesson, we're dealing with um the 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 covenants with God. So we've already looked at uh in this in this lesson series, uh we've looked at the 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 uh covenant uh between God and Noah that that uh with the sign being the rainbow. It was a covenant that God made with, with Noah and all of mankind that he would never, ever destroy the the the, the earth again with... Uh, um, Hi, is anybody on the line? Yes, he'll never destroy the earth again with rain. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I keep muting myself on, on the uh, conference call. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that, but we're on the conference call and on Facebook. Um, um, so with this, with this, with this Sabbath, with this Sabbath, I mean, excuse me, with this uh, um, covenant that he made with Noah that there, that there, there'd never be rain again, he gave a sign of the rainbow. Then we went into the lesson last week where we dealt with the covenant that God was making uh, with Abraham 
changed his name from Abram to Abraham, meaning that he was going to be the father of many nations. And the sign that he gave them, the covenant, the signature or the seal for, for that, that relationship of that covenant was circumcision. Well, now we're looking at another uh, covenant that God made with the children of Israel, and, and he used this, this uh, covenant as the Sabbath. The Sabbath is that sign. And so as we look at this, this lesson today, we look at this lesson, the Sabbath, the key concept is the Sabbath was a special day given to, to Israel uh, to rest and worship God. And then uh, our keys for kids, because I like to make the lesson very simple uh, for the children to, to just grab a hold to uh, the keys for the kids. The Sabbath was a day of rest to honor God. Two, we should sit a set aside a day as, as special to God. And three, today most Christians set aside Sunday to worship and honor God. So we're going to deal with that just a little bit in this lesson. Um, uh, to get down deep into the lesson, um, the lesson facts that we're going to deal with is we're going to summarize the early instructions to the Israelite regarding the Sabbath regulation of the Mosaic Covenant. And then our biblical principle is to understand the Sabbath principle of, regular, of principles of regular and periodic rest. And then our daily application. And this is the one that I really, really want us to hoard uh, a horn into is to set aside a time for rest and to be refreshed. Oh, hallelujah. And so as we look at this lesson, uh, I'm going to be talking about rest. I'm going to be talking about refreshing, reflecting, and rejoicing as we go through this lesson today. That those you want to get four points, those are four great points to grab a hold to. Rest, refresh, reflect, and, and rejoice. Um, now, as an introduction to this lesson, uh, after I get through all what I've just said, but the, even more so an introduction, uh, many people uh, learned this term uh, probably in the in the late 70s. They called it being burnt out. Prior to the 70s, we, we didn't know nothing about being burnt out. We worked and we worked and we worked, uh, especially many, many of, uh, of us who are on the line who were African Americans, you 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 just worked. You worked. You, you had two or three jobs. You, you you did whatever kind of work you could get your hands to, so that that you could provide for your family. And even before uh, the the period of where we worked, what we call we call that the the Jim Crow era, the Civil Rights era, and all that before all of that was slavery. And when in slavery, we worked and we worked. That's what we did. We are not a lazy people. Many people try to put that label on those who are of African-American persuasion. We're not lazy people. We are working people. And, and many people find that, that even in today's society, people overwork themselves and they get burnt out. Oh, oh, I mean, you name it, whatever job you got, or how many jobs, if you don't take a day of rest, you get burnt out. And, and even those of us who are in the ministry, those of us who are in the church, it, it seems like there's one thing after another that we have to be, have to be responsible for and taken care of. But, but God wants us to not get to the point where we're burnt out. Because when you're burnt out, when your body is overworked, when your body is, 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 doesn't get uh, sufficient rest, Insufficient rest is a poison recipe for, for being burnt out. And so today we're going to look at this lesson and this lesson gives us an antidote, God's antidote to being burnt out. And his antidote is real simple. Take a day of rest. Take a day of rest where you can refresh. Take a day of rest where you can reflect. Take a day of rest where you can rejoice and be glad in what the Lord has already done in you, through you, and for you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to his name. And so the, the, the subject of this, this lesson is, 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 is part of an a early instruction to, to the Israelites regarding the Sabbath. Um, th this, this instruction that he gave 
in this part of our text um, was not the first time that God used this, this subject of rest. The first mention of the word Sabbath as a noun was when God provided manna to the Israelites on their journey towards Mount Sinai after they had been released from slavery uh, and delivered from Egypt. And so what he told them then is that um, uh, on, on, on the sixth day of the week, when this manna came down, you are to take two days, gather two days worth of manna. And then on the seventh day, don't go out to gather any manna because there won't be any. And But the manna that you have will last for that seventh day. Now, now understand, if they gather too much manna on any other day, the first to, to the fifth day, that manna the next morning would be spoiled. But this time, on the sixth day, when they gathered that manna, it wouldn't be spoiled on the seventh day because God wanted them to, to rest. He wanted them to, to, uh, to have a Sabbath, if you will. And so, so that, that, that's how God first started using the Sabbath to teach the children of Israel how to take a day to rest, to refresh, to reflect, and to rejoice because they had been in slavery and they worked all day and all night. Hallelujah. And they needed a day of rest. And so in the third month after they left Egypt, the Israelites assembled in the front of Mount uh, uh, Sinai. And there God gave to them, uh, uh, spoke to them, and gave them the Ten Commandments. And we, we see that in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Uh, and the requirement to keep the Sabbath was the fourth of those commandments. And it was the longest. So if you read verses... Uh, chapter 20 of Exodus, verses 8 through 11, you'll see he gave all kind of instructions regarding the Sabbath. And, 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 and this, this instructions that he gave, he required that the land also be, be given a, a one-year Sabbath rest. And, and, and then he, he gave instructions to give weekly Sabbath rests. To every person and every uh, beast of burden. It was something God mandated. And you'll find that over in, in the 23rd chapter of Exodus. God wanted everybody to rest on the Sabbath. And then Moses, he, he confirmed this covenant with the people over in Exodus chapter 24. And then God called him to the top of the mountain to receive more instructions. And so a break sort of occurred around chapter 24 and Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days and for 40 nights. And then we come to this section of Exodus chapter 25 to 31 uh, um, where, where, where it's recorded God commands about the construction of the tabernacle and how to furnish, furnish it and all of that. And so now after he gave Moses the instructions of how to furnish and lay out the tabernacle, the place where God will reside with the people of Israel. Uh, we pick up our text today and, and we find um, this, this, this Sabbath law, this Sabbath day observance. And so let's look at our, our first part of our lesson, uh, the actual text. And uh, where am I book at? I'm going I'm to read it now out of the New Living Translation. I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. And I'm going to read verses um, 12 through 15 first out of the New Living Translation. Listen to it again. It says, the Lord then gave these instructions to Moses. Tell the people of Israel, be careful to keep my Sabbath day. For the Sabbath is a sign of the covenant between me and your generation." From, to me, from me and you, from generation to generation, it is given so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. You must keep the Sabbath day, for it is a holy day for you. 
Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Anyone who works on that day will be cut off from the community. You have six days each week for, for your ordinary work. But the seventh day must be a seventh day of complete rest, a holy day dedicated to the Lord. Anyone who works on the Sabbath must be put to death. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we have this Sabbath day rest, this day that God has instructed his people to take this seventh day and make it sacred, the sacred Sabbath day. Now, 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 what does Sabbath mean? Sabbath means taking the time, taking a moment to not do any work, no uh, uh, exhaustion, no exertion of yourself on the Sabbath. And, 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 and so the, 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 the thing that, that, that um, we, we have to realize is that I can or nobody can tell you how to rest. But you know, as well as I know, the work that you do the, the, and the six days of the week. And, you know, in our society, there, you know, versus their society, there was no nine to five working where you just work eight hours a day and all that. They work 12 or more hours a day. And, and, and they did it six days a week where we in, in, in modern day America and and other places, we work five days a week, and then we have a Saturday off, which is 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 is, is considered the Sabbath day. And then we have Sunday off, where we go and we worship those of us who are who are are are, 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 are Christians. We go and worship on the on the Sunday, the day that the Lord was raised. And I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Um. So so. They needed a time to rest. And God said, this is the Sabbath day. It, and I want you to take this day of rest. Make it sacred. Make it sacred. Set it aside and take a day of rest. And in that day of rest, I, I want you to understand something. I am so serious about this. That, 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 that when I tell you to take this day of rest, you really need to take the day of rest. Now, now understand, God had just gave Moses the instructions to build the tabernacle. And I'm quite sure the people were so excited to build the tabernacle that when they got ready to start building it, they would never ever take a day of rest. They would have just kept building, 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 building. But but God wanted them, no, no, no. That that if you go and do that, you're gonna burn yourself out. And then those who who would not take a day of rest were 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 being blasphemous. They were they were being disobedient. They, they, they were going against what the Lord had told them to do. He wanted them to take a day of rest. And, and he says, it, 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 it's, it's a day of rest that, so that you can be sanctified. And, and what, what does that mean? To be set apart, to be made holy, to be set apart. That, that's what he wanted them to do. Take a Sabbath day rest. To, com to completely rest. Now, I know some of y'all are begging. This question is just it's just rolling through your head right now. You, it's just it's just on you. Well, are we supposed to celebrate the Sabbath day rest under the new covenant? I'm just gonna go straight to the meat of it. Are we supposed to observe the Sabbath under the new covenant? Well, I live in Huntsville, Alabama. That's the area I live in. And, and, and we are in an area where there is a very strong presence 
of the Seven Day Adventists. I, I have many Seven Day Adventists of uh, people that I associate with, do business with, work with, and they are uh, very strong believers in resting on the Sabbath, the, the seventh day of the week, which is Saturday. They observe it, and, and, and they observe it with all of their heart, their mind, and their spirit. And, and so they take that day seriously. I have no problem with them taking that day seriously. They are following what they believe. But I believe, based on what Jesus did on the cross, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and he was raised from the dead on what we call the Lord's Day. The Lord's Day is the first day of the week. We celebrate our Sabbath rest in the Lord on the first day of the week. Now you say, well, well Pastor, that's what you believe. What, what are you based in that, that belief on? Well, we, we, we have to deal with, we have to deal with how the Lord dealt with it. We, 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 we have to approach it from what the Lord himself said about the Sabbath day. We, 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 we have to deal with it because, you know, there were many Jews in his time who had issues with him healing people on the Sabbath day. They, 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 oh man, those folks got very upset about him, him healing people on the Sabbath day. But Jesus over in Mark chapter, uh, chapter two, he, he said something to them. He says, now look, God created the Sabbath for the benefit of, of the people. The Sabbath was created for, by God for men and not men for the Sabbath. And, 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 and he, he talked about later on, Jesus says, well, now, look, if you, if you have a situation where your, your ox or your, your donkey falls into a, into a hole, wouldn't you go out and take care of that? And the many people would. So, so, so there's a new covenant in the New Testament with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and because of that new covenant, because of that new relationship with God, we, we don't have to worry about the Sabbath day rest as us being violating that rest. We want, we're not going to violate that rest. We're going to celebrate that rest. As we go to church on Sunday, as we come home that Sunday from church and we spend time with our family and our friends and, and our associates, that's our rest. Now, I, I got I to gotta be honest with you now. You know that there's some people that work on the Sabbath day. The police, firemen, nurses, doctors, all of them work on Sunday. All of them work on Saturday. Are they violating and they're, and they're going to be punished? No, 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 they're not. God's grace is amazing. He understands because they still need to take a day of rest. I have, I have children who, who, who work and they work hard and, and they work on Sundays and, and their, their days of rest are Monday and Tuesday. Because they're in the restaurant business and Monday and Tuesday is typically the day that, that are less uh, uh, restaurant business, but Saturday and Sunday are days that, that are great. So they rest. You have to take time to rest. I believe that is what God wants us to do more than anything else is take time to rest, to refresh, to reflect on his goodness, and then rejoice. Oh, hallelujah. So, 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 in, 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 in the Old Testament, in, in the time that Moses was given this instruction, God was given him to tell the people, God put this down so that the people would follow it. And now in the New Testament, he's given us grace to rest and take that time to refresh and think about him and reflect on him and to remember 
all the things that he has done for us. Just like the children of Israel had to refresh and remember that God had blessed them by bringing them out of the land of Egypt and bringing them out of slavery. Yes, the Sabbath is sacred because God made it sacred. And we are to celebrate that sacredness with God. So, it is for our benefit to get rest. It has health benefits. It helps with stress management. It helps us to, to sit back and, and reflect upon God so that we don't have doubts and we won't be double-minded. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to our second part of our lesson, starting at verse 16, and I'm going to read 16 and 17 together. Listen to what he says from the New Living Translation. The people of Israel must keep the Sabbath day by observing it from generation to generation. This is a covenant obligation for all times. It is a permanent sign of my covenant with the people of Israel. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day, he stopped working and was refreshed. This is a continuous covenant that God made with the children of Israel. And we know that, you know, uh, uh, I've lived in, in St. Louis and in St. Louis, we have a very large uh, Jewish community. And, hey, they shut everything down on the, set, on, 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 uh, the uh, Friday night, uh, starting at six o'clock. And they don't open up anything until after six o'clock on Saturday uh, evening. That, that was their Sabbath day rest. And they worship together and they prayed together and they ate together as a family. That's what they did on their Sabbath day rest. They continue to do that still today. And 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 so this this is a blessing. This is a blessing. It, it's perpetual. It's continual for the children of Israel. But like I said, for us, we're under a new covenant as Christians. I'm not negating what, what they dealt with, but we are in a new covenant. Let, let's turn to some New Testament passages of scriptures. I want to go first to uh, Romans chapter chapter 14. Because I, I don't want people to be saying, well, he's saying a whole lot of stuff, but he ain't showing us in the scripture where it is. Go to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Just go there for a minute. Romans chapter 14 and... Uh, Romans chapter 14, we're going to look at verse uh, 5 and 6. Listen to what he says. He who observes the day, observe it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day, he, right, and he who observes the day, observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day, to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, Eat to the Lord, for he who gives God thanks, and he who does not eat to the Lord does not eat and give God thanks. For none of us, I'm going to go to, okay, hold on, yeah, he said read, read this. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lives again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. And I just wanted to read this because it's dealing with those who observe various days. Now go to Colossians chapter, chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and we're going to look in Colossians chapter 2 at verse 16. So it says, let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a feast or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. So, so. Don't don't get caught up 
with people saying, well, you, you walk around worshiping on Sunday, but you don't worship on, on, on the Sabbath day. You're breaking the Ten Commandments. Well, I, I'm sorry. Don't judge me. And what I eat, what I drink, or regarding the festivals or the new moon or the Sabbath, they, these were just shadows. But the substance of it is Christ. Because Christ is our Sabbath rest. Christ is our Sabbath rest. He's our eternal Sabbath rest. And he is perpetual. He is continual. He is eternal. And we have a Sabbath rest in him. I don't know about you. I can't wait till the day I get to be in heaven with my Lord and my Savior. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. What a day of worship and praise that will be. What a day of rest that will be. Oh, hallelujah. That's, that's who we are. That's who we are in Christ. And so as we get ready to go to our last point in this lesson, our last point is verse 18. Um, and it's, it's dealing with this, the, the tables of the testimony. Um, and, and this is what, what it says from the, 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 um, the New Living Translation. When the Lord finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the, the two tablets, of uh, uh, stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant written by the finger of God. So th this, this, this is how... The, the lesson ends. It's dealing with 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 the Lord um, um, giving Moses these tablets, and so after his his forty days and forty nights up on the on the mountain, Mount Sinai, communing with God, uh, God gave him two tablets, and, and and these were two tablets of stones. Now. It doesn't tell us that at this point that these two tablets had the Ten Commandments on it, but we believe this was the initial uh, uh, set of, of the Ten Commandments. And and then um, these two these tablets didn't last long, unfortunately. Uh, if you continue to read over into the 32nd chapter, these, these two tablets didn't last long. See, when Moses came down from the mountain, um, he finds the people of Israel worshiping a golden calf, an idol. God had already told Moses about it, you know, that that's what was going on. So it was no surprise to him when, when, when he got there, but to see it with his own eyes and, 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 and just to see the people dancing and worshiping this calf. Moses temple temp, temp, temper just just overflowed and and he threw the tablets and broke them and and but God God's grace is awesome God later on read over in the 34th chapter he gave Moses a new set of commandments a new set of tablets and, and that's how God is He's a gracious God. He's a wonderful God. And so these tablets were kept in the Ark of the Covenant for many generations. And, and then when Solomon uh, built the temple, uh, the Ark was put in there and, and, and all of the, the, the everything like the Ten Commandments that was in the Ark of the Covenant was put in there. And it, it, it remained until the temple was destroyed with the, with the, uh, during the Babylon um, uh, exile. And so this, 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 this here, this here, uh, uh, these tablets, these, these, this is a tablet of God's word to, to, to the children of Israel. And, and it is still a word that is good for us today. It, it's the law. But we're, we are, we are see the law. We have to see the law as our teacher. And then we have to understand that, that God gave us grace through Jesus Christ. And because God gave us grace, none of us could ever keep all of the law. But because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, 
we now have the ability to keep the essence of the law, which is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and soul and your neighbor as yourself. So as we get ready to close, and I know I've been a little long-winded this morning, um, these are some things we need to ponder. God established the Sabbath as a sign between him and Israel, a sign that his people were holy, set apart, sanctified. Two, rest was the key to keeping the Sabbath as God intended, and it is hard to keep one's spiritual defenses up when his body is continually exhausted. Three, the observance of the Sabbath was linked to the, to the day God rested from his work of creation. And four, now through Jesus, God has written his law in our hearts and in our spirits. And so therefore, we ought to walk According to the spirit. As the people of God it is very important for us to take time to rest and worship the Lord. Being busy all the time is not good for our physical body and is also not good for our relationship with God. God gave us an example when he worked for six days and then rested. Let's follow God's example. Take a day of rest. And worship him. Thought to remember. God did not design us to work. 24 hours a day. 7 days a week. 365 days of the year. Like a machine. Oh hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear father. Dear heavenly father. Thank you for setting the example. Showing us how to rest. Help us to always honor you by remembering to take a day to rest and worship you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the eternal rest in Jesus that you promised to your people. May we live faithful to your son, Jesus, using our time, our work, and our rest to honor him. And all that we do, do it all to his glory and to his honor. We pray this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Before we leave a lesson, we like to give those who are listening now and might be listening to this recording later an opportunity to give your life to Christ. And so we pray the prayer of salvation based on Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, and Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Bless Facebook. We're going to log off and we're going to go into the conference call where we'll have a discussion of the lesson. If you want to join us in the conference call to make comments or, uh, or, or to have questions, call us at 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218. 0531. That's the conference call line. Thank you and be blessed. Have a wonderful and great day. I had someone ask me to repeat my, my Romans passage of scripture just before we get offline. So uh, let, let me just mention that Romans uh, chapter look at my notes here. Romans chapter 14 verses 5 through 9 I believe I read Romans chapter 14. Have a blessed day. And may God keep you.